These are the Micronaut space vehicles. Gore. King. Pulsar. Stretch Armstrong. Jaws. Jaws and You give her a bath when you're in the tub. You get carried away. Be careful. Some assembly required. The joke's on him. The battery's not included. Lots of fun. It's loads of fun. Fun for boys and girls. Be great idea. What do we have here? My Here's what you can do. The toy business is a multi-million dollar industry. We spend millions every year, and the toy industry spends millions to get our millions through advertising. Earlier this month, Newswatch 16 asked you to let us know what you like and don't like about the toys you've had around your house. From the letters received, you're saying something to the toy makers of this country that you're getting fed up with the ever-increasing prices you have to pay to entertain your children. Angry at shelling out more than ever before for toys that last less time than ever before. Some don't even make it through Christmas morning. Mad because too many toys just aren't as exciting as they appear in commercials. Too many toys arrive with parts missing, and just maybe there are too many toys, period. The letters indicate the major problem these days is finding toys that will last and that the kids will want to play with. In the letters, we did hear about many fantastic, durable toys. Unfortunately, most are for preschoolers, made by just a few companies. The most praised, Fisher-Price, Play School, and Tonka. For age five and above, the search for a toy that will last and get played with gets harder. These are youngsters TV advertisers are out to get. The toys for them are the most heavily promoted and the most complained about. So armed with your letters, I went to Philadelphia recently for a toy show where most of the manufacturer's products were on display. I was ready to question representatives from companies with the most complained about toys, but they were conspicuous by their absence. Only a handful of manufacturers had people at the show in Philadelphia, and they happened to be from companies with the fewest complaints. But the question is the same, and you don't get much of an answer from the toy people. How can the consumer be sure that this time it's a good one? The same way uh, as he can be sure when he buys a car that, uh, that it's going to be a good one. And if it's not, then he ought to take it back to where he bought it. The consumer can visually identify what, what product is right for her child, and sometimes they do occasionally make a mistake. Toy industry insiders who wouldn't go on camera do admit to me privately that bad toys are put on the market and others just aren't much fun, so they disappear. I've learned 50% of this year's toys won't be around next Christmas. That brings one secret tip from the toy companies. If you saw it on the shelves last year and it's still there this year, chances are it's a successful toy and is not a victim of heavy complaints. But even that is no guarantee. Tonight at 11, we'll take a look at specific toys and let you know how they rate. Bob Absher, Newswatch 16. At 6 o'clock, I told you about the problems of toy buying, what we found out from your letters and a recent trip to Philadelphia. Now, we have an informal guide to toy buying, based on the viewer survey and some personal testing of toys at the show. There is overwhelming praise in the letters for several manufacturers. Unfortunately, two turn out toys mostly for preschoolers, but that's good news for the very young ones in the family. Fisher Price's Lift and Load Depot is representative of its line. It's sturdy, mostly plastic, but banging it around doesn't seem to damage it. And an independent test shows it withstands the weight of an adult. Plenty of things move and no batteries. Play School has a big variety of toys for the preschool crowd as well. Plenty of things to shake, rattle, and roll, and even pound. Sturdy and educational, say many of our letters. Tonka is yet another company mentioned over and over in our viewer survey. The trucks are long-lasting and will withstand plenty of punishment. A few years ago, a TV ad, you may remember, showed an elephant stepping on a truck. We've seen nothing to contradict the claim that the truck would still be usable. At the toy show in Philly, though, I found Gabriel's Young Erector set. It appears shaky at best. Just touching one display set up at the show started it toppling. The package says it's for three to eight-year-olds. No parents I talked with, though, thought it was anything a three-year-old could handle. Also, for the young ones are many pull-the-string-for-action toys, such as Mattel's See and Say. But in our viewer survey, it gets criticized for becoming jammed and unrepairable. Dolls are a big concern in the toy buying market. Some of our letters show parents are becoming convinced that dolls that do absolutely nothing are the best to buy. Fashion dolls like Migos Farah or Kenner's Six Million Dollar Man draw complaints because heads, legs, and arms come off and get lost. Some of them are supposed to come off, but there is a tendency to get lost anyway. 
Looking at just one of the new dials for Christmas, Ideal has Suntan Tuesday. Under natural light, it tans. The drawbacks are obvious, though, in climates like ours, when you tend not to spend too much time outside in the sun for quite a while after Christmas time. For older children, I found plenty of road race sets. One of them, Tyco's Night Glow Double Loop Racing Set. It could cause frustration, though. Despite what the cars are supposed to do, time and time again, I saw them stopped in the loop or running off the track. Others at the show seem to have some similar problems, so if you're buying one, try to see it in action. Then there's a fascinating truck, the Max Machine by Schapper. It's a remote control gadget that seems like a lot of fun, but I couldn't get it to turn with every click, as it's supposed to. And it hardly ever goes straight, and it takes batteries. One of this year's real strange ones is Stretch Monster, or Stretch Armstrong. It stretches every which way, but parents complain the stuff inside that makes it stretch leaks out. I did find one new toy at the show that seems like it could be a Christmas hit. It's Milton Bradley's Comp 4, an electronic guessing game. Those I talked with who did play it thought it was great, but it's expensive, generally over $30. What you've seen might help you get through the Christmas morning without too many problems this year. The warnings in our viewer surveys, ask yourself before every purchase, is it designed to last? Many plastic or cardboard toys are useless in just hours regardless of price. Choose carefully. Manufacturers have many different toys. They are not all bad. They are not necessarily all good. And be sure the toys you buy fit the ages of the kids. If it's too sophisticated, they can lose interest. And even if it is a good toy. There is a tip from toy industry insiders who won't say it on camera, but they admit half the toys for this Christmas won't be around next year because they're either bad or uninteresting. That means if you don't have to have the latest, look for toys that were here last Christmas. If they're still advertised this year, it's an indication they're satisfying. And if you have problems, write the company. Most don't like to talk about it, but they do have liberal replacement or repair policies. Bob Absher, Newswatch 16. <laughs> It seems like everybody on foot is at a dead run. It seems like everybody on wheels is at a standstill. This is what it looked like near the Wyoming Valley Mall. Traffic was backed up from the mall to the interstate over a mile away. What is the reason for all this shopper madness? When you look at the calendar, there is nothing really very special about the day after Thanksgiving. It looks like almost any other day of the year. Except that when you go downtown or to any shopping area, you see a whole lot of people, and most of them are doing their Christmas shopping. And if you try to find out why, you'll get almost as many answers as there are people. Why are you downtown shopping in all this crowd? Just because I got a little of the Christmas spirit, I guess. The crowds don't bother you? Out. No. Why should they? You we were out of school now, and I had to get some shopping for my parents and my family and everything. The crowds don't bother you at all, all the traffic no. jams and that stuff? No. Because it's a nice day, and the sales were advertised, so we're here today. The crowds don't bother you at all? Pardon? Crowds don't bother you at all. No, uh, it's more like Christmas. About the only thing these shoppers have in common is that they're carrying packages and they don't seem to mind the crowds. Without a doubt, the Christmas season is here. Oh, and there are only 25 shopping days left. At Martell, Newswatch 16, Wilkesbury.